why would you want to be an MTI? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a bad boss? What if I could give you an opportunity to mold the bosses of the future? Come and put this hat on. You can make a direct impact on the people who are going to lead not only you, but the airmen that you care about so much. I guess we just do whatever we want. You ought to know FP, over for your program. How did you I was in NCO8, check my email, say congratulations, you've been selected for NTI duty or something of that nature. I just, in my head, I told myself this is something that I needed to do and something that I very much wanted to do. I was 100% on board. As soon as they get here, yes, it's very much that follower mindset because they're telling them what to do, when to do it, but ultimately they start to go into that leader, the leadership role and leading each other. These individuals could very well be our supervisors at our next duty station. So it's very important to us that we show them what an NCO is supposed to be. You know, even coming here as a technical sergeant with a line number for master, being in an environment that was overwhelmingly officer was intimidating at first and it was awkward. It took me a while to find my way because the Air Force is 80% enlisted. I'm used to that culture. Officers are rare and came here and it was, it was different. And once I got comfortable with it, building those relationships with those CGOs has been one of the most beneficial things about being here. And going forward, when I go to often back to my AFSC, my knowledge of CGOs and FGOs and my ability to communicate with them is going to be stronger and that's going to help our relationship which is ultimately going to help the unit and help the Air Force. Well, now you know. Facts of life. What a huge You're impact welcome. you can have on so many people's lives. How are people going to remember you? Are people going to remember you? You have this one life where you can either positively influence individuals or you can get up and go do the same thing every day. Our job as MTIs is getting them to the Air Force standard, the fundamentals, the basics. So it's that very much that attention to detail. So a lot of these, the officers, you're, you have future doctors, nurses, um, your JAG officers, your line officers. So they're responsible for aircraft. So that very attention to detail and they're going to be leading these individuals they have to make sure you know one small mistake in the operating room and there's a it's a game changer so a lot of these jobs what they're going to be doing there's no room for error so we're that small attention to detail um, ultimately could be a matter of life and death Go back the way you were. basically Go back. now they're making leadership decisions they're making um, command decisions, whatever it might be, um, when they're out here. And when we approach them, whenever they make a bad call, we're making sure it's a difference. So we approach them in a very mentorship-like um, function. So they make a bad call, we talk to them about it. All right, hey, why did you make this decision? Hey, did you consider these things, all right, these variables? Um, and, and that's how the coaching mentorship happens. Um, so when they get here, you know, it's, it's very directive very directive um, because we're trying to get them to that standard um, but once once they're there and once they know that standard and they're upholding it there's no need for the elevator volume anymore not unless they go back on it <laughs> and uh and then and then that comes back into play how many of you all have i personally yelled at by show of hands forward march you leave does that make sense yes sir when i say forward march you leave so tonight we're going to talk about why enlisted members have been a part of forming officers since general washington and those officers knew that those enlisted members who were responsible for forming them, getting them to the point where they could wear their uniform properly, where they could march in formations, where they could follow orders, those officers knew those enlisted members didn't get paid the same. So the silver shilling was their gratitude to that enlisted member. And that has carried on today. The officer trainees, when they graduate, they will give us a silver coin, uh, a commemorative coin for, for their appreciation giving them the knowledge of what an enlisted member brings to our force. In my opinion, there shouldn't be an officer accessions program in the United States military that doesn't have enlisted members having a significant role.